think what I always like to talk about is lasting trends and not latest trends. Um, I think fine dining is never something that we've really looked towards for serious inspiration because we like to offer, often in our hotels we only have one, one main restaurant and we like to offer a, an experience which, which guests can have regularly. So we don't want it to be just a special occasion, once in a blue moon kind, kind of thing. We want to be able to offer things like Brasserie Prince at the Balmoral, which is um, you know, a very classic brasserie, um, lots of covers, a very buzzy environment where we hope the guests will come back week after week or even twice a week for lunch or so. Um, but of course, you know, um, fine dining has, has often been at the forefront of sustainability, um, quality of produce, um, really sourcing the best ingredients, and that's something that we've always looked towards. We work with an amazing chef called Fulvia Perangelini, um, who's our creative director of food, and he had a Michelin-starred restaurant called Gambero Rosso, which is always in the top 50 in Italy. And you know, a lot of the a lot of the philosophy of food comes from him, and he's obviously couched very much in a fine dining background. But we hate fiddly, fancy, over the top kind of food. So as far as possible, we really try, I mean, everything we do is to try to attract a local customer. 70% of our guests are not hotel guests, so whether they're locals or um, tourists from other hotels. Um, and um, it's really important to us that we attract them because our hotel guests now don't want to eat in your restaurant or your bar unless you are part of the local community, unless you are on the blogs and on the um, guys and people hear about you know restaurants by word of mouth and they ask locals and so if your locals aren't going to you um, then the hotel guests aren't up either um, and I think that's really important. And so as far as possible we, we structure ourselves to encourage the standalone business. We market to local people, we have local PR agencies, um, we look at the figures for who's coming from in-house and, and externally. We have standalone PLs, PLs for all of our bars and restaurants um, so that we see how they're profiting on an individual basis. Um, but also I think it just takes someone with a rest, food and beverage head who has a lot of influence and, and can really push for the food and beverage side of the business because obviously we know it's not the biggest revenue generator. For us it's about 35 to 40%. And it's not um, the biggest margin. Rooms have much better margin. But it is the biggest communicator. Um, it's the biggest thing for marketing. And so it's really important that we, we get it right. Health and wellness is so important for us. Um, I work with my sister on a program called Rocco 14 Nourish, which is healthy eating at every touch point of the hotel. So gluten free, sugar free, lots of plant based dishes in the bar, in the room service menus, in the mini bars. Um, so that's and that's something that we've had real success with. We see that in Frankfurt, for example, Villa Kennedy um, is a mainly corporate hotel, and it was more successful than anywhere else there, which we wouldn't have expected with sort of male businessmen mainly male businessmen. Um, and also I think in general just all of our menus now have a lot more vegetarian dishes on them. I mean there's still only 3% of vegetarians in the UK for example, but a lot of a lot of people when asked do you consider how much meat they're eating and do you have meat free Mondays um, or are conscious about having sustainable fish and good quality ingredients and not just going for volume of meat and fish products. And then alcohol, I mean lots of people in uh, uh, less and less people drinking alcohol. 25% of people from 16 to 25 don't drink at all in the UK, which to me is a quite surprising number. And that's growing. Um, and so in our bars, making sure that we have healthy, non-alcoholic cocktails, not full of preservatives and additives and colorants, um, but all fresh ingredients um, and that taste as good as the you know, normal alcoholic cocktails as well. Things like that. So we have we have a lot of consultant chefs. Um, so I, you know, br we bring in chefs who have expertise for that reason to listen to them and to have you know um, to use their advice and to implement their advice. Um, I'm not a chef. Um, I did a 
professionally cooking course when I was 18 and I worked very briefly in kitchens but I'm not a chef and so you know we do rely on the expertise of our, of our chefs and we have people like Fulvio Penangelini who I mentioned earlier but also Adam Bayer who's a one star restaurant at uh, Trinity in Clapham does everything for us at Browns um, in London we have Salvatore Calabrese who's this amazing uh, cocktail um, maestro as he likes to call himself and he does um, the Donovan Bar for us at Browns and we're looking to do more projects with him as well so um, as far as possible I try and bring in outside experts and, and really collaborate and listen to them because it helps us innovate and it helps us focus as well on our food and beverage and have that food and beverage mindset.